up everyone JD here I hope you're all doing well today today I'm going to be bringing you my disassembly of the Civivi conspirator knife this is going to be the it's a little overdue but it's going to be around the three month maintenance and disassembly for this particular knife really still one of my favorite Civivi button locks I would say this and the Altus being the sub three inch or right at three inch are my two favorite button locks from Civivi so far this year. But having said that, they did a fantastic job on their Sincut Saxi. That one, under $50, you're getting 9CR, which is not as high quality as the Nitro V Steel is, but you are getting a very well done micarta, sitting on steel liners, button lock, great, great, great knife. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor, leave a like for the video. Consider subscribing if you're enjoying the content. I appreciate the support. Thanks to everyone out there that has already subscribed, regularly commenting and supporting the channel. Also, if you haven't been in one of these disassembly videos before, I typically go through the tools. They're all the way linked at the bottom of the description if you're interested in them. So this is the Kershaw bit holder and it has the smaller Weeha bits in there, really good bits. I like this because it has the internal storage and because I have bigger hands, it's it's actually a little bit more comfortable, but I do recommend the Weeha stubby bit tool that is down there as well if you wanna kinda just consolidate and get all of your needs in one purchase because it does come with some Torx bits. I also use the Scout tool that has the larger bits from Weeha in there don't know if you can see that hopefully you can see that hold on let me get it up here there you go oh i had it i had it the right way the first time these are linked down in the description as well they come in this little organizer it does have a driver and then it has an assortment of torx bits i really do like the weha bits they're very well made for the money i also recommend a little bit of lock stick and then i also recommend that you have a little bit of lube for these installments and it's always nice to have a little microfiber cloth to help keep things clean all right having said that let's go ahead and get into it the conspirator is going to have two t6 bolts that are in are on the pocket clip one of them is going to go through the actual barrel so keep track of that when you pull it out but it's not hard to find it again it'll be longer than the one that's in the bottom and everything else is going to be t8 you're going to have a spring directly on the opposite side of the button lock here so you're going to want to be mindful of that when you're taking it apart so it doesn't pop loose on you now having said that and go ahead and just take the pivot and loosen it just a tad to relieve some of the tension. I hold the knife to keep the tension on the spring to keep the scale from popping off, and I go ahead and get the all the T6 hardware out of the way at once. So I'm gonna take the bottom screw out first and back it out until it stops spinning, and then I'm gonna take this one all the way out the barrel and it's gonna be laying on top. You may notice that I actually picked up the Wee Banter pocket clip for this. I actually prefer the banter pocket clips on the Civivis. I know they have that mil titanium clip, but that came out after I had picked these up. So I do know that exists and that it's out there and it's a very nice affordable option and nice that Civivi offered that because of the feedback that they've gotten. But again, I picked up the banter pocket clip and I like it. So I really don't think it's worth paying again for another pocket clip when I have one that works. And yeah, it says banter, but I think it goes well with everything. All right, you can go ahead at this point and back out your pivot and your hardware and make sure that you're keeping pressure on the scale because you don't want that spring to pop out when you're not ready for it. This is not all the way out. It's still threaded just a little bit. There we go. Go ahead and make sure. I have, uh, I believe I have this work mat linked down at the bottom i like this because it's nice because it keeps your parts from rolling off the table if that microfiber cloth will stop sticking to me so it's a nice place to stick everything while you're working this captive pivot that is on the other side of this bolt that we're removing right here it actually uses the scale to hold the captive pivot from spinning so go ahead and set it down and you'll see it just lift this the scale up which is why i said you want to be careful with it it's a nice spring um, it has good tension on it i do when i do these disassemblies i do just take them and kind of pull them 
lightly out just to make sure that if they've worn in any, I'm putting a little bit more tension back in there. I like to do that at the maintenance periods. Again, not anything crazy, just a little bit of pulling. At this point, there's no screws. You're on the actual skeletonized liner. You can go ahead and just start to wobble it off. Um, be careful not to pull at one side too hard from the other because if it gets torqued or angled, it's going to actually be difficult to get it on and off next time. It's really sticking back here for some reason now. I'm not sure what it's sticking to, and I want to be careful not to... Let me get it off this side first. There we go. Mine was really sticking. This is the first disassembly. I usually do these when I first get the knife just because I want to make sure that it's lubed, but everything was working so well that I really didn't think it was necessary to take it all apart. Here you just want to clean everything. You can get a good look at where the track from the factory ceramic bearings have started to build. The next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and lift the blade out of position and take note the smooth side of the bearings are facing outward. So just keep note of that. I actually will put the stop pin back in place. Let's go ahead and get the other bearing out and it fell right out. At this point, just go ahead. You can use a little rubbing alcohol. If it's not too dirty though, an actual dry wipe usually cleans everything off, off real nicely. I do the white microfiber here so that you guys can see what I've cleaned and, and it actually is very, very clean. Let's check the pivot. We'll move up to this section here. Oops flip it over and check the pivot as well. You can actually pull the pivot out from the other side if you want to, but being that it's really quite clean, it's not very dirty at all, um, you know, your, your results may vary. Again, I would actually keep the pivot tool, the pivot tool, the stop pin in play on this side, when you go to reassemble everything, it's nice to keep those mats down and keeping everything flush. At this point, what you'll want to do is go ahead and, oh, I forgot to clean the blade. One second. Let's clean the blade off because that's going to have the most grime on it um, from everything breaking in and wearing in. So, and you can see there the Nitro V. Very nice steel. Very, very, just like 14C28N, um, takes a screaming edge. Maintenance is really nice on it. And um, it's a good steel. It holds a, an edge a really long time mine's getting to the point where I think it's going to end up um, getting a sharpening here soon but um, as I'm talking and getting distracted I'm totally skipping steps here so go ahead and just a little bit of oil try to keep my finger out of the way so that you can see what I'm doing here and just a couple of dabs on the scale you really, I totally missed the track. Don't need much here. Remember, smooth side out, which means, and I know that probably seems a little counterintuitive, but you're going to be looking inside of the caged bearings. And then I would just take a little bit of lube on the pivot. You really don't need much. Not much is coming out of my applicator because I'm not squeezing it enough. There we go. And then go ahead now and drop your blade back in place you'll just have to work it in a little bit try to make sure that it gets centered up and everything it should go in nice and smooth i've found that civivis come back together very nicely same thing here just a couple of drops to get ready for your bearings to be dropped back and now you want to be looking at the smooth side when you reinstall these i know my hand just got in the way but again just a few drops you don't need much there um if you don't mind getting messy, it's actually, I find really good to take the bearings and then put the oil on them and then rub them around on the finger. But either way, it's going to lube up as you fidget with the knife. Now here, I know we put them on the inside, but I do like putting on both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it up in frame and let you see the drops really close just in case you didn't see them earlier. And that's really all that you need. Now I have seen where people talked about polishing the push button to get rid of any potential lock stick. You can do that. I don't have any. I have just a very subtle hint of lock stick, which I actually really like to leave it like that because it lets me know that there's going to be no lock rock that the tolerances are super duper tight. Now when you go to reassemble this, just make sure that everything has 
fallen into place. Your barrel, lanyard barrel should be flush just about. It might be recessed a little bit. And then also your standoffs here for your hardware should also be um, pretty flush. And then same thing here, make sure your stop pin is protruding through and that your button is protruding through. At this point, you're gonna go ahead, reinstall the spring. The spring is gonna fall into this cutout on the micarta. So you're just going to want to line it up. It's um, oversized, sized, which is nice, but you should kind of feel it if you drag it along the micarta. You should kind of feel it fall into place. So now you're going to want to push everything down. You'll have a little bit of resistance, but it's not going to be too hard to manage while you're reassembling everything. Again, just a little bit there. If you have problems with your pivot backing out, you would want to go ahead and put the Loctite on it before you reinstall it. I have found that my pivot on this particular the knife doesn't really move so I'm not going to reinstall it with any Loctite I'm just going to leave it as is that pivot bolt I tightened down enough to keep it from backing out but I have not tightened it to where I want to start working on removing blade play um, what I'm doing now is going ahead going ahead and reinstalling the back bolt for the hardware and that is in place as well this one I'm going to tighten all the way down and then I'm going to start checking my centering and my blade play to make sure I don't have any. Um, I have a little bit of blade play. Let's see here. But it is centered. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little, I do micro adjustments just a little bit at a time to see. Oh, that's actually really quite loose. All right. So now we'll check it and see and then start making the adjustments. All right, so just a hint, go ahead now and just a little micro adjustment. There we go. Check it now. Just a hint of blade play. Let's see here. I actually might have pulled the spring out too much on that. There we go. Now it's starting to settle. Yeah, now it's starting to settle in. And I have just a hint, a little, barely, barely, barely. All right, that was a tiny little adjustment. All the blade play is gone. Blade is nice and centered. Like I said, I have found that the Civivis, I think I got a little oil in that micarta, so a little bit of patina going on. But I have found that the Civivis usually go to be, uh, go back together very well. If your bolts felt uh, fell out, felt out, Lord have mercy, make sure you just check and that that small one's in the front because the long one is going through the standoff in the back that holds the knife in place keeps the scales properly separated i can't really see because i'm behind the camera and then just go ahead get everything started there we go these you do not need to over tighten you have so much there we go you have so much hardware holding everything together you just need to take it and get it snug i would not over tighten these so once you get them in place, just give them a little bit of a turn to make sure that they're secure. Go back and check yourself. Make sure that everything's nice and tight on the back. Check your centering one more time to make sure nothing moved around. Check your blade play. Nice and tight. Eh, I might have a hint of wobble. Let's flip it a couple times and see. And this will help your oil work in as well. Yeah, just a little bit. That's a little bit of movement. And again, if you find that your pivot's backing out and you check your blade play, if you find that it comes back, you can remove just the pivot bolt. With all that hardware installed, it'll keep the spring from pushing the scale out too much so that you can get a little Loctite on it. If you're using the liquid or the non-liquid, either way, I recommend letting it sit at least 24 hours. 48 hours would be ideal and you don't need a lot you just need to cover a little bit of the threads and letting it sit will cause it to cake up enough or clog up enough to where it's not going to back out easily so that is the disassembly and maintenance at three months still really liking this um, being that it's full size and i have large hands this is a great size button lock on here works good the action on here is good 
It is not as good as the Protec Malibu. Protec has really dialed their little detent system for these button locks up nicely, but man, it works great. And it's gotten smoother and smoother over these last four months or so. And I really do like Nitro V. Again, takes a great edge. It holds a great edge. This does have the factory edge on it. I just haven't gotten around to sharpening it. So when I do use it, I'm stropping it to keep the edge sharp, just like it was from the factory. But I think I'll probably lay this back to 18 degrees here soon and uh, really see how that Nitro V does on this particular knife. If you again enjoyed the video, if you could leave a like, I appreciate that very much. If you're not subscribed, again, consider subscribing. Love to have you follow along. And hopefully this has helped you with the disassembly. Your button locks from Civivi are gonna be pretty similar to this. So if you're not finding your model, cause I don't have one for the Chevalier, I do have one, I think I have one for the Altus. Yeah, definitely have one for the Altus. They're very, very, very similar in the disassembly. So hopefully this has helped you. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you all have a fantastic week and until next time, peace.